South Park has had many iconic episodes from Scott Terraman Must Die to Casa Bonita, Pee Wee's Water Park, and many more. One of the episodes, in my opinion, that has stood out as one of the best depictions of a video game in media, as well as being one of the funniest episodes of the series, is the iconic episode Make Love Not Warcraft. This episode has bridged a gap for both South Park and fans of World of Warcraft, as many have used this episode to introduce their friends into the game as well as have the adverse effect of getting WoW players into South Park. I'm one of these people because back in the day I had only seen one episode of South Park with it being the episode where the kids go to the rainforest. Although this episode was hilarious, South Park existed outside of the Triforce of the three TV channels that I would actually watch with them being Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and the Disney Channel. Anyways, I had long forgotten about South Park until a new member of my friend group when I was a teenager found out I played World of Warcraft like he did, and he told me to check out the South Park episode. Immediately, I was hooked on the series and the rest is history, but although this episode serves as a fantastic introduction to get players into the game, it has some striking differences from what we see in-game versus what we see from the actual show. And today I'm going to be covering 15 of those differences, as well as giving my thoughts on them as we go down the list. But first, if you guys like videos like these and want to help my channel out immensely, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you can be notified as these videos release. Now. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Number 15. Kenny as a human hunter. In the South Park episode Make Love Not Warcraft, Kenny is a human hunter. Kenny and Randy in the South Park episode are both human hunters, in fact. Is that a computer game? No, Artard, it's an MMORPG. These are real people I'm playing with, see? I'm a hunter, level two. I can chat with all these other people. I can even wave to this guy, see? Hello. The hunter, back in WoW Classic, was a class that wasn't available to humans as they were only playable by Night Elves, Dwarves, and then Tauren and Trolls over on the Horde side. This was a design choice that was made on purpose back in the day to give variety to the players that you would see on screen. Humans eventually did get the ability though to play Hunters during the Cataclysm expansion. Number 14. Battles in mid-level zones with low-level gear. One of the big battles that takes place in Make Love Not Warcraft is a battle in the mid-level zone called Arathi Highlands. However, many characters in the zone were level 1. These characters roam the area and are killing monsters, which in-game would be nearly impossible because of two reasons. The first one being that when you're a low-level character, higher-level mobs have increased aggro range, so these characters would be practically pulling the whole zone, running around like they did in the episode. And the second reason being that it's nearly impossible to kill these creatures at level 1 without some sort of serious exploit. Realistically, it would have made more sense for everyone to meet up in a place like Westfall, as most of the group would have been able to get to Stormwind, but if I had to give my own guess, the Arathi Highlands was probably chosen because the lighting and terrain is much closer to Elwyn Forest, in design, which is where most of the episode takes place in game. Number 13, inconsistent character names. The main villain from the episode is named Jenkins, but he also goes by the character name Noob Poner. This is a joke about him obviously going after new players, and the name is used interchangeably. Stan as well goes through a little bit of a character inconsistency in this episode, as the character name we see on screen is Stan is Cool, yet Blizzard refers to him as Loves to Splooge. Yes, we are looking for a great knight by the name of Loves to Spooge. That's my son's character's name in Warcraft. Number 12, Jenkins Level and Abilities. Jenkins is depicted as having a level that has surpassed the game's maximum level cap of 60 in World of Warcraft Classic. Jenkins, within the episode, had become so powerful that even the developers could not control him. Jenkins even possesses a power that has never been seen at any point within WoW's life cycle, and that is the ability to summon scorpions. This ability is reminiscent of a spell that was available in Warcraft 2, 
but this spell has never been available for players to use in World of Warcraft. Now, unlike what is said in the South Park episode, WoW Classic has a level cap, with it being level 60. Some MMORPGs of the time featured uncapped leveling systems, which might have influenced the episode's narrative. But I think that the writers were overall using terminology for the show's narrative that fans outside of just World of Warcraft would understand. Number 11. Alliance players sending each other to the Shadow Realm. A significant plot point in the episode is Jenkins' ability to engage with PvP combat with other Alliance players outside of designated PvP zones. In World of Warcraft, players from the same faction, Alliance or Horde, cannot typically attack each other outside of specific PvP-enabled areas, ensuring a structured gameplay experience. The character Jenkins, however, has the ability to ignore the in-game rules and attack players from his own faction. Number 10. Leveling and Mob Experience Unlike in WoW Classic, the characters in South Park's version of WoW appear to level continuously by killing low-level mobs such as boars. World of Warcraft imposes restrictions on experience gained from low-level creatures once a player outlevels them and the mobs turn gray. This game mechanic prevents players from indefinitely solo leveling through low-level mob kills encouraging progression through more challenging content as characters advance. Now, this is something that has always disappointed me as Blizzard didn't implement it into the actual game. The montage of the boys grinding levels during recess and all hours of the night killing boars is such an iconic part of the episode and I feel like it really captures exactly what people think World of Warcraft is like as the montage shows the boys dedicating their lives to the game and slowly gaining weight and becoming basement dwellers the more they get sucked into it. Also, considering you can level up through something like herbalism, which is just picking plants, I don't see any harm in gray boars giving you two experience per kill. On a side note, players have proven that you can actually get to max level by killing nothing but boars. You just wouldn't be able to grind them out only in Elwyn Forest. You would have to traverse the actual world. Number 9. Horde Mentions and Faction Races The South Park version of World of Warcraft exclusively features Alliance characters, omitting any reference to the Horde faction. Butters, what the hell are you doing? I got World of Warcraft like you said! You can't be the dwarf character, Butters. I'm the dwarf. Well, there's only like four races to choose so from. So pick another one! I'm the dwarf, you stupid asshole! Log out, create a new character, and log back in! I like Hello Kitty on Adventure a lot more than this stuff. In World of Warcraft, the game's early factional divide included alliance races like humans, night elves, dwarves, and gnomes, each with unique racial abilities and cultural backgrounds. The Horde, on the other hand, featured orcs, forsaken, trolls, and tauren, representing a diverse array of races united by their common goal to seek refuge from the tragedies that had befell each of their cultures. This is kind of essentially what makes the Horde a really unique aspect of the game, because they're essentially a faction founded by refugees from a tragedy that they had brought upon themselves by using Fell which eventually corrupted their planet. The Warcraft movie, although it can be a little bit rushed, explores and overall gives players like myself who didn't play Warcraft 1 a better understanding of the Horde's perspective. But the South Park episode focused entirely on the Alliance characters, which I think overall helped the episode as instead of having it be a faction war between the boys like we've seen with the Console Wars episodes, it was more of an episode about how one player is destroying a community. Number 8. Butters' character and gear. Butters is portrayed in South Park Make Love Not Warcraft as being a low-level player with mid-level gear. In World of Warcraft, new characters typically start with basic gear appropriate to their class and level. They gradually acquire better equipment throughout gameplay and questing experiences, so it really wouldn't make sense for him to have the same level gear as Cartman if he really just created that character. Number 7. The Final Battle Duration The final battle in the episode is depicted to have lasted over 17 hours. 
Most boss battles in WoW have enraged timers to shorten the length of the encounter. However, PvP in theory can last forever as they don't have a time limit unlike PvE encounters. I myself have seen some seriously long duels in WoW. I'll never forget a Death Knight and a Paladin going at it for what felt like hours in Cataclysm, and a large crowd had circled around them, like you see in this photo taken from a user claiming that the battle between two warriors had lasted over an hour. Number 6. Enchantments and Soulbound Items Before the big battle with Jenkins, Cartman tells Stan to give Kenny a cloak that has plus 15 agility enchants on it. Dan, what enchantment does your cloak of the tiger have? Plus 15 agility? Give the cloak to Kenny, he needs the agility boost for bow attacks? Enchantments on items make them soulbound, so Stan wouldn't be able to trade Kenny the cloak. Number 5. Stonehaven isn't real. Near the beginning of the episode Make Love Not Warcraft, Kyle can be heard saying, Come on, we have to finish a quest in Stonehaven. Come on, we have to finish the quest in Stonehaven. This may come as a shock, but no place exists in game. And surprisingly, they haven't added an in game area named after the South Park line. Number 4. Ike's Armor. This one may come as a little bit of a shock, but Kyle's younger brother Ike humorously appears in high level gear compared to other players, defying typical starting gear expectations in World of Warcraft. New characters typically begin with basic equipment appropriate to their class and level, like I mentioned with Butters, but somehow Ike is running around with high level gear despite barely even knowing how to play the game. Number 3. The Sword of a Thousand Truths The Sword of a Thousand Truths uses the same model as the Hungering Cold, and a sword we would later see when the raid Naxxramas was re-released for Wrath of the Lich King, which was a sword called Slayer of the Lifeless. But the Sword of a Thousand Truths had greatly increased stats, as opposed to the Hungering Cold from WoW Classic. The Sword of a Thousand Truths, as opposed to the Hungering Cold, had the ability to burn all mana from a player after they hit them. For reference, this would be extremely broken in PvP, because a warrior would just have to hit a mage once for them to essentially have no access to any of their spells. In WoW Classic, the sword The Hungering Cold uses the same model as the Sword of a Thousand Truths and is a reference to the episode specifically saying, how do you kill that which has no life? Later, when the sword was re-released for the Wrath of the Lich King version of Naxxramas, the flavor text of Slayer the Lifeless would say it was foretold by Salzman, who is a named accountant at Blizzard within the South Park episode, but it's unclear if he was a real accountant at Blizzard. I don't know about you guys, but this was always one of the biggest disappointments to find out back in the day. For all the people who didn't play well, the Sword of a Thousand Truths stood out as a very memorable and kind of ingrained and iconic sword for fans of both WoW and South Park to remember, despite its name never actually appearing in game. If I had any influence over Blizzard back in the day, I think it would have been so cool if the Fragments of Frostmourne gave us the Sword of a Thousand Truths with an updated model during the Legion expansion. Number 2. Jenkins' Inconsistent Armor Despite being a mage as evident by his use of Fireball and Arcane Explosion, Jenkins wears a helmet that seems to be either plate or mail. This is impossible in game as mages use cloth armor. Number 1. A Game Master Can Send Any Player to the Shadow Realm A Game Master can kill any player or ban them anytime they want. Game Masters, like I mentioned earlier, can ban you at a moment's notice if you rub them the wrong way. Hell, back in WoW Classic, they could have teleported Jenkins to an infamous area known as GM Island, with a creepy interrogation room that he would have had no way of getting out of. This is essentially a Game Master's domain expansion, and truth is, Jenkins wouldn't have made it very far in real life before getting banned from the game. In fact, something similar to Jenkins' overwhelming power has happened before within the game where a Game Master accidentally sent a player a weapon that allowed them to kill any player within 30 yards in an instant, and despite it being Blizzard's mistake, after using the item in PvP, it resulted in the player being banned from the game. Well guys, that does it. I said around the beginning of the year that going into 2024, I wanted to get more experimental, and I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. It really does warm my heart to see you guys who discovered me through God knows what video, to be here watching me talk about anything from coconut crabs to The Legend of Zelda, and seriously, I can't thank you guys enough for everything, it really does mean a lot. But of course, if you guys like videos like these and want to keep up to date with them, 
please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you can be notified as these videos release. And of course, if you want to support me directly and hopefully contribute to me being able to do YouTube full time, please consider becoming a channel member. It allows you to have access to our emotes you can use while I livestream without having to go through third party apps. And finally, if you would like to interact with me directly, my Discord and my Twitter will be in a pinned comment down below. Alrighty guys, you all take care, have a good one.